What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to bring you a early 2024 fantasy redraft mock draft. Now, it's June 1st as I'm recording this video, so we still have plenty of time to obviously break down players and ADPs and draft positions are all gonna change throughout the off season, mostly in July and early August. I figured, hey, why not go after one right now and just do a mock draft? Kind of see where people are being evaluated, uh, see what kind of team we can come up with. You know, every year there's a general trend that the fantasy community follows, whether that's going to be, you know, nah, we're not taking quarterbacks this year, or hey, tight ends are really up. You know, we're going to take a lot of early tight ends or receiver, running back, whatever the case may be. And I think this will be a great test to see. What's the trend? You know, what is this year's, you know, slogan going to be for fantasy football? And from what I what I know already, it's going to be early receiver. You know, early receiver seems to be kind of the key to everyone's fantasy strategy, right? That is going to be the headline news this year. It's going to be take a receiver early. Running backs are too unpredictable. And I've heard it once. I've heard it a million times. And it always seems to come back to running backs being the key to fantasy football success. So today... I wanted to pick a random spot here, and let's do a mock draft. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pick just five here, and then I'm going to randomly generate it. Let's see, draft settings. I'm going to randomize the draft order and see what we get here. Um, before we do that, I just want to break it down. Doing a one quarterback, two running back, three receiver, one tight end, one flex, and five bench spot drafts. It's 13 players total. Um, you know, hey, if listen, if you play in a two receiver league, then you can obviously, you know, adjust how you want to if you want to value receiver a little bit more. But I kind of think the standard going forward should be three receivers just because there's so many receivers in the NFL. But that's a, another discussion for another video. Uh, without further ado, let's check the draft order. I'm going to randomize the teams. And we got pick 11. All right, so we'll go with pick 11 here. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. So we start off the draft with Christian McCaffrey, Tyree Kill, C.D. Lamb, uh, B. John Robinson, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Amara St. Brown, A.J. Brown, Brees Hall, Puka Nakua, and then the boy is up. So this is a tricky situation because, because there are a lot of good players. But I kind of feel at this position, we are out of the receiver game. All these receivers, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven receivers went in the first round. That never, ever happens in fantasy football. It's usually vice versa where it's more of a, oh my God, seven running backs went and now I'm looking at receiver at the back end. You know, that was a seven to three split with no quarterback and no tight end getting taken in the first round. But here is my kind of dream scenario. I absolutely love Jameer Gibbs. Um, I did a scouting report video on him. If you want to check it out below or above, there'll be a notification. Um, but I love Jameer Gibbs. I think he's really talented. Um, if we just look at kind of the rece or running backs here, um, there are a lot of good guys, I would say. And the receiver, or sorry, running back class is pretty deep this year. Not a ton of guys I feel super safe being my number ones. Um, and then even receiver, still a lot of good guys here. But I want to make sure that I grab a running back that I really want to be my RB1. So if Jameer Gibbs is sitting here at pick 11, I just think it's a smash. Um, let's go with that. And then let's see what we get two picks later as we have the quick turnaround. So I took Jameer Gibbs. Jonathan Taylor went. Marvin Harrison, the rookie, went. And then we are back on the clock. So if we look overall, these are the players that we are kind of dealing with here. We have Garrett Wilson. Saquon Barkley, Kyron Williams, Drake London, Devontae Adams, Chris Olave, Brandon Ayuk. And then we start to get into some quarterback tight end uh, groups here. So, I, you know, I kind of I'm curious and I want to see how ugly the receiver position gets and see who we can kind of get with. Um, on the way back at receiver, who could be our receiver one? So I'm, I kind of want to just lean running back and just make it kind of fun experiment. Um, out of these guys, I think Saquon would be my take. Um, it's really between, I would say Saquon Jacobs and ETN for me, but I think I'm going to take Jake or, uh, sorry, I think I'm going to take Saquon Barkley. Um, I just like him in that Philly offense. I think he's still a really good player. Um, and I think this could be a huge bounce back year for him, especially, like I said, I mean, he's on a very competent offense where we just saw, you know, DeAndre Swift be a really fantasy relevant running back. And that's with Jalen Hurts stealing 15 touchdowns. So I think Saquon could just easily step in and be awesome. So I'm going to go Saquon Barkley. And then we have the long dreaded wait all the way back to our picks. And this, something for us to look at is what's the receivers going to look like? I mean, as you see here, I'll start rattling it off. 
Garrett Wilson, Drake London, Devontae Adams, Kyron Williams, Josh Jacobs, Josh Allen, Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave. Our first tight end goes off the board at pick 211 uh, in Sam Laporta. Stephon Diggs, then we enter the third round. Devon A. Chang kicks it off at the top of the third. Travis Etienne, Nico Collins. Kelsey is the second tight end off the board as the uh, fourth pick in the third round. Debo Samuel, Derek Henry. Mike Evans, Jalen Waddles, Malik Neighbors, DJ Moore, and then the boy is back up on the clock. Looking at the overall players here, we have a ton of quarterbacks that are itching to come off the board. Uh, we have a we have Michael Pittman at the top, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, and then if you look at some running backs, we have Pacheco, uh, Rashad White, and then the big thing is what receiver can we get here? What is our receiver uh, receiving core going to look like? Um, it's it's a little rough, right? And if I could go back, I would, and I would probably take a receiver earlier because I still think there are quality running backs that I would feel comfortable with as my RB2. I would be okay with Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, I don't really like Rashad White, but James Cook. I love Kenneth Walker, Alvin Kamara, James Conner, you know, Aaron Jones, Swift, Ramadri Stevenson. There are some guys here that I still like as our running backs that I would have felt comfortable with taking here instead of taking Saquon. So I could have got a better receiver, but what could have been, let's look forward. So here, I think we have two solid receiver or running backs. And I think I want to go with someone who's a little bit on the safer side, someone who I feel really confident in that is just going to finish as a top, you know, 10 to 15 receiver at the end of the year. And I think that's Michael Pittman for me. Uh, Cooper Cup's interesting because the upside's there, of course. Um, same thing with a player like, you know, Zay Flowers, a lot of upside. DK Metcalf is just a freak. He could be he could be 1,500 yards or he could be 1,000. But I, I want to play it safe, and I'll go up Michael Pittman here as he feels kind of the most bona fide player on the board left. Then we go, we're right back. Uh, Patrick Mahomes went right after us, and then Isaiah Pacheco. So the two Chiefs came off the board, uh, and then we're right back in the same position. So this is something where we could look at tight end. You know, we have Trey McBride, Mark Andrews, Dalton Kincaid, um, some guys there. I kind of want to pass on that. I'm not an early tight end drafter. I just, I, I think it's too early for any of those guys right now. Um, looking at the running backs, we still have some great running backs. Um, and I'm, I'm a little tempted just to go RB heavy to kind of see what our team would look like if we just passed on receiver. Um but I want to keep it as realistic as possible. And if I was in a real draft, I think I would probably lean towards taking a receiver. And I got the safe guy in Michael Pittman. So now I want to shoot for upside. And when you look through this list here, I think there's other safer guys later, some some more you know established guys. And I don't want to wait too long for a receiver. You know, I mentioned I was like, what if we take a third running back and we pass on receiver? I just don't think I could do it in this spot. There's too many. There's not enough good receivers coming in the next turn here uh, for me to really feel confident. So I'm going to go DK Metcalf. I think Metcalf provides us a chance at safety and upside because there's, if you look at, you know, kind of his career, there's been seasons where he goes for 90 catches and 1100 yards. And there's games where, or seasons where he goes for 65 catches and 1100 yards. So what kind of player are we going to get this year? I don't know, but at least I know that I should get an a thousand yard receiver and he could be 90 catches or 65 catches, hit or miss, or very consistent. It's, it gives me the shot of both. Um, so moving on, we'll move on after our DK Metcalf selection. We have Jalen Hurts, Cooper Cup, CJ Stroud, and this is where the quarterbacks and tight ends flew off the board. Um, CJ Stroud, Rashad White, Devonta Smith, Tank Dell, Joe Mixon, Lamar Jackson, James Cook, Kenneth Walker. Then we hit the fifth round. Mark Andrews leads it off. Keenan Allen, Trey McBride, Amari Cooper, George Kittle, Zay Flowers, Dalton Kincaid in the fifth, Kyle Pitts follows him, Alvin Kamara, George Pickens, and then we are back on the clock. Um, this is a spot where we can kind of go with anything. We could go with a quarterback in Joe Burrow, Anthony Richardson, who are kind of, you know, Joe Burrow is one of the elite guys in my group. Um, I have Anthony Richardson high too, just for the rushing upside. But I think at this point, I want to wait. I still think we need to, to, you know, maybe if one of those guys falls in the next round, I really want to round out my starting lineup of receivers and running backs. And how do we do that? You know, we have to look and kind of evaluate what we have left. So at receivers, we have T. Higgins, Roma Dunze, Rasheed Rice, Christian Kirk, Jordan Addison, 
Terry McLaurin, Jaden Reed, and then it gets kind of ugly of guys that I don't super trust. With the running backs, we still have James Conner, Aaron Jones, David Montgomery, Swift, Ramadre Stevenson, Tony Pollard, Najee Harris. So we still have some talented guys a little bit later at the running back position. So I kind of want to just round out maybe my receiving core. I don't think there's a ton of guys left. Um, I, I I like Christian Kirk a lot here. Um, taking him in the fifth round, I think is is a little bit early, but you know his ADP is 61, so he's right around this range. Um, I I, I kind of think that's the pick. I, I don't want to really risk it with any of these other guys, especially in a team like this where I think I have some upside plays with Jameer Gibbs, Saquon Barkley. Those are my hitters. Those guys I feel confident are going to be my home run threats with DK Metcalf kind of giving me boom and bust weeks. So why, you know, I don't want to risk it with another kind of upside play. Take another guy in Christian Kirk, who I think is just really steady and let Michael Pittman and Christian Kirk kind of be my rock stars at receiver. And then let DK Metcalf have his blow up weeks. Let Saquon and Gibbs kind of have the big weeks and let everyone else fill in. So I'm going to go with Christian Kirk here as my wide receiver three. We had T Higgins and Aaron Jones go off the board and then we're right back. And this is a situation where I would like to round out and maybe get my third receiver or third running back rather. I I would like to go get a backup. Um, I, you know, I, like I said, I could, I could swing and I could go for Richardson or Joe Burrow, um, which is tempting, but I think there are a lot of other quarterbacks that I like, like, and there's a lot of them this year. Um, this is definitely one of the years where I think I'm going to sit back and kind of wait on the, uh, quarterback position. So I'm going to pass there. I wouldn't be against it if you went, man, I'm going to go for Anthony Richardson because he provides a lot of upside with his rushing. And Joe Burrow, man, I've seen him throw for 35 touchdowns and 4,500 yards and be a top five guy. I get it, 100%. But I still think there are good quarterbacks later that I'd rather just take the swing on. So here, let's look at running backs. And we're in the group of James Conner, Swift, Montgomery, Ramondre Stevenson, Tony Pollard. And the, the, the running backs are running out quick right? That it's getting thin quickly. So I just want to take a guy that I know is going to be a starter. And, and I, I think is talented. And I know you think that answer is going to be James Conner, but for me, I like Ramadre Stevenson a lot. I think he's a very talented player. I know the offense sucks. You might completely disagree with this, but I like the player a lot. So I'm going to take Ramadre Stevenson, who I think could just be a touchdown threat. I've seen him do it through the air on an offense that has really no backup running back that scares me for competition. So I'm going to go Ramadre Stevenson. You might like DeAndre Swift, but I think Khalil Herbert's good. Um, and they just paid Swift. But I've seen Swift kind of get kicked out of Detroit. And then, you know, Philly just said, eh, we'll just upgrade, buddy. Like, see you later. We don't want to pay you. Which, I mean, hey, if you're going to get Saquon Barkley, I get it. So for me, I just gonna, I'm going to go Ramadre Stevenson. And I'm just passing on Connor because he's always injured. You know, why take the always injured guy? I, I just, it, it seems like it's a lock for him to get hurt. So I'd rather just take the swing with Ramadre Stevenson. All right. And then on the way back, we have James Connor, Evan Ingram, Jordan Addison, Anthony Richardson, Roma Dunze, uh, Rasheed Rice, Joe Burrow, David Montgomery, Dak Prescott, Xavier Worthy, Hollywood Brown, Terry McLaurin, Jaden Reed, Chris Godwin, DeAndre Swift, Kyler Murray. I was praying Tony Pollard got back to us, but we just missed him by about four or five picks. We have Raheem Mostert, Calvin Ridley, David Njoku, and then we are back on the clock. And here is just another situation of, do I want to take the chance on a quarterback or do I still want to wait? We still have, you know, kind of Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Tua, Jared Goff, Jaden Daniels. There's still a lot of guys left. And then if we go to tight ends, you know, we are running kind of thin on tight ends here. And at this point, since I missed out on kind of everyone else, I'm just willing to wait. You know, I'll take the shot at the end of my draft on Luke Musgrave or Kate Otten or Pat, um, Pat Fryermuth, you know, I just don't think it's worth taking Brock Bowers or Jake Ferguson right now because I think they're all kind of the same. So I'll just take a tight end later. So now I'm still really focusing on the receiver and running back group. I want to try to get a star here or a stud that I can find kind of late. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with splitting it up because we already have three running backs. We already have three receivers. So let's, let's look at receiver here. And we have some guys that are very interesting. You have a lot of rookies here with, you know, Brian Thomas, Jr., uh, Ladd McConkey, Ke uh, Keon Coleman, A.D. Mitchell. Uh, you know, so those are some rookies that are definitely, I think, flying up the boards as potential guys. Um, I still like DeAndre John or Deon Deontay Johnson because he's a good player. Um, I just saw uh, Adam Thielen go for a thousand yards last year. They traded for Deontay Johnson and they just brought in 
Carolina brought in uh, uh, Brian Canales as the head coach. Is that right? Brian Canales? Whatever, the head coach for uh, is now in Carolina is uh, Tampa Bay's old offensive coordinator, which kind of revitalized Baker Mayfield's career. Um, I think it's Greg Canales, now that I think about it. But whatever, <laughs> I'm forgetting his name. But hey, this is me editing the video and realizing I'm a dummy. It's Dave Canales. So not Greg, it's Dave. Uh, they brought in the OC from Tampa Bay to be the new head coach for Carolina. Maybe he revitalizes Bryce Young's, you know, kind of career. Not that he's revitalized, but after a rough rookie season. So I'm just willing to go with Deontay Johnson maybe uh, here at this point and just shoot for another player that I can think can be a week-in, week-out starter flex play. I'll go Deontay, uh, Deontay Johnson. Um, I'm just passing on any of the, rec- the rookies right now. I want to hear more about them in the offseason before I go and make a big swing for them. So I'll go Deontay Johnson here. All right, and then Zamir White and uh, Brian Thomas Jr. went off the board. So now I'm going to look at running backs. And we have a lot of guys here that are just going to be really hit or miss, right? We're in the range of... Najee Harris, who hasn't really been as terrible as people made it out to be. I mean, him as an eighth round pick is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, partner him up with Jalen Warren, who or Jalen Warren, who people think are a lot is a lot better than Najee Harris. Uh, we have Javante Williams, who wasn't very good last year statistically. I still like as a player, but um, you know, I think has that job to himself at least. So you know, he's one of the the, the ba- like best running backs left that I think kind of has the pure job to himself. Sure, he's going to technically split with you know Jaleel McLaughlin, but I think Williams will be kind of the the head of that and not be in a you know 60 40 split like Najee Harris is. We have Austin Eckler, who I think was really bad last year on the on film, um, but maybe could just be a pass catching back out of the backfield. And then we get into guys like Zach Moss, who's now in Cincinnati, uh, Jonathan Brooks, rookie who looks like he could be the starter for Carolina, Devin Singletary. Tajay Spears, Brian Robinson. So there are still some guys on the board here that I really like. Um, I, I want to get one of them because I'm just worried that 20, you know, you know how many picks? You know, 20 picks later, by the time we get back, we're not going to be able to get anybody that we really, really like. Um, I'm going to pass on quarterback, and I'm going to look for that in the next round. So for here, we went with a receiver. I'm going to look to get a running back. And for me, I, I think I'm going to take Javante Williams because I just think he's I think he's talented, coming another year off the knee injury. Um, and I have a feeling that Najee Harris is just going to get replaced. They didn't pick up his fifth year option. They like Jalen Warren a lot. Jonathan Brooks is coming off a knee injury. Maybe that's stupid for me to pass him up here, but uh, I'm just going to go with Javante Williams, who I feel kind of foolproof is going to like be the starter or at least, you know, start the season as the starter. So I'll go Javante Williams here. All right. And then after Javante Williams went Najee Harris, Jordan Love, Nick Chubb, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, Jake Ferguson, Austin Eckler, DeAndre Hopkins, Jalen Warren, Jonathan Brooks, Caleb Williams, Devin Singletary, Lad McConkey, A.D. Mitchell, Brock Bowers, T.J. Hawkinson, Christian Watson, Tua Tagovailoa, Curtis Samuel, Zach Moss, Brock Purdy, and then your boy is on the clock. And here, I think is the time we strike with quarterback. Um, there are some guys left that I don't are kind of out of my tiers. You know, if you look at my tier list that I had in my video, uh, my rankings video. There's no one in the upside play category left for quarterback except for rookie Jaden Daniels. The reason why I'm going to go with Jaden Daniels here is he has this rushing floor to me that is so, so high. I don't care if he throws for 20 touchdowns as a rookie and 3,000 yards. If he can rush for 500 to 600 yards and score five touchdowns on the ground, he'll be a top 10 quarterback, bare minimum. So I think Gene Daniels here is the play over someone like Goff and Herbert and Lawrence. Guys who I feel safe about, comfortable, maybe I'll take one of them with my last pick just to have two good quarterbacks, but I think I can just find a decent quarterback in free agency kind of on waiver wire. So I'll go with Gene Daniels here as my last kind of upside play. Cortland Sutton, Dallas Goddard come off the board, and now... We're looking at guys who I think are just good, and I'm I'm just I'm easily gonna go Tajay Spears here. I think Tajay Spears is freaking awesome, and I was so looking forward to him being the starter until they brought in Tony Pollard. So I'm gonna go Tajay Spears. I think he has the ability to catch the ball in the backfield. He I think he could be in a true split with Tony Pollard. And while I think Tony Pollard is still good in Tennessee, I think he's a good player. I think last year's stats with Dallas. Were I think he got crapped on really heavily, and then it's a bad look that Dallas just let him walk and didn't want to pay him the big money. But I think Tony Pollard is still good. 
But I think Tajay Spears could be a starting quarter or starting running back in this league easily. So I'm going to go Tajay Spears. Maybe they're in a 50-50 split. Maybe he takes the job. Maybe we get a Tony Pollard injury. If we do, I think Tajay Spears is a smash league winning you know, player right here. So I'll take Tajay Spears easily at, you know, what, pick 10-02 or 10-2? I'll take it. And then as we head into our last kind of three rounds, um, just looking at our team overall, I'll pull up the roster here. We have a, ro- a starting roster of Jaden Daniels, Jameer Gibbs, Saquon Barkley, Michael Pittman, DK Metcalf, Christian Kirk, Ramadre Stevenson as our flex. And then we have Deontay Johnson, Javante Williams, Tajay Spears. I think we're good here at uh, court, or running back. I don't think we need to keep taking some guys. I have some guys that I like. You know, I like, I wouldn't mind Zach Charbonnet, uh, Jalen Wright, Ty Chandler, I think is a really underrated player. Um, But at this point, if I'm drafting a real team, we need to focus on receivers. And at this point, you're not seeing a lot of guys who are going to be kind of week in and week out starters. So at this point, I kind of want to just take an upside play. Maybe it works out. Why not go Quentin Johnston, right? Had this terrible rookie year, but is still a first or second round pick in the real life draft. He looks like he's going to be pegged as the receiver one, you know, unless he has a terrible camp and he falls down. But what if he steps in and is just awesome right away? And maybe not awesome, but what if he's just, you know, has the sophomore year bump and is a playable player, you know? So I'll go with that. I don't really see the point in going with someone like, Brandon Cooks or, you know, Roman Wilson or Gabe Davis, Jerry Judy, guys that I've seen just not perform before. Take the shot on Quentin Johnston and uh, let's see if it works out. So after Johnston goes Zach Charbonnet and Troy Franklin. So now I'm back again and just quickly, I'll see if there's any tight ends that I'm really eyeing up. Um, Not really. I think my pick here would probably be Luke Musgrave if I had to pick one. Um, I he had a decent year last year. Same thing with Friar Muth. Not a great year last year, but a good rookie year. Um, I like him. But, you know, at this point, you know, we could go with maybe an, up, an upside play with Rashid Shahid. I mean, if you look at his stats last year, nothing crazy. But, you know, finished the year with 700 yards, five touchdowns, kind of a, a weekly kind of hit or miss play. Um, it, it, more of a, a best ball kind of guy. But, you know, hey, why not go for it? We could. Um, Josh Downs, who had a pretty good year as well, if you look at his stats here at the bottom. You know, 68 receptions, almost 800 yards, only two touchdowns. But playing with a backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew. Uh, we have some other guys that are just quick, like Dontavian Wicks. You know, a lot of upside here, only 500 yards, but 39 receptions. So, you know, average 15 yards a target or reception, which is really big. Um, But yeah, I I think we go with, I I think we look at a running receiver here and I'm going to go Rashid Shahid. I think he could just be a big downfield threat, you know, be our kind of filling guy week in and week out. Um, And, you know, why not? You know, maybe it works out. Maybe it doesn't. Derek Carr is not the best quarterback, um, but whatever, you know. At this point, we're throwing darts. And then as we head into the end of the draft, we'll look at tight end here. And maybe one little regret I had was probably should have went with Pat Pat Fryermuth or Luke Musgrave because they were the last guys I actually felt pretty confident about um, being like starters. Um, But in most leagues too, this is a problem you're not going to have to run into because if we just look quickly at the board, this team drafted two tight ends, Brock Bowers and Ken Kelsey. This team drafted two tight ends. This team drafted two tight ends. This team drafted two tight ends. This team drafted two. This drafted two, drafted two. So nearly all but three or four teams didn't draft two tight ends. So not all of these tight ends are going to go off the board, right? I mean, if we if we look at the tight ends and we show who's drafted, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We had 18 tight ends go off the board. I don't think that's really going to happen in real life. Like real fantasy drafts, I think you might fall into the, you know, maybe 12 to 14 range. So these guys should still be here at the end of your draft. But for this, you know, mock draft sake, um, I'll just go with, ah, man, maybe Hunter Henry had a decent year, you know, uh, ah, God, not really, honestly. I mean, no, not really. Um, ah, hey, maybe I'll just go Taysom Hill. Hey, why not? Have fun with it. Go Taysom Hill, a guy who is going to be maybe get those games where he's going to be rushing the ball as quarterback and you're going to get the options and you might get some receptions, just, you know, whatever. So it doesn't matter. It's the end of your draft. But now looking at it to end the draft, this is the full draft board. If you want to take a look here, uh, we finished a team with 
and I'll pull this up, our roster. We our starting lineup is Jaden Daniels, Jameer Gibbs, Saquon Barkley, Michael Pittman, DK Metcalf, Christian Kirk, Taysom Hill at tight end. And then we have a flex option of Ramadre Stevenson, Deontay Johnson, Javante Williams, Tajay Spears, Quentin Johnston, and Rashid Shahid. Um, only thing looking back that I would have done probably a little different is starting off with two running backs. You know, I think this team could look a lot different where if you maybe put in Isaiah Pacheco, like he got drafted here at 401. If we would have t- taken, you know, maybe uh, Garrett Wilson or Brandon Ayuk or uh, you know, I don't know, uh, Chris Olave instead of Barkley, we could have swung back around and gotten Isaiah Pacheco as our RB2, which I would feel pretty confident in. Or, you know, whoever, Rashad White, Joe Mixon, James Cook, Kenneth Walker. There's a lot of guys going in that third, fourth round range that I like at receiver or at running back. So maybe taking a stud receiver, making sure that you either split the position or get a stud receiver as they're going really quickly seems more important than ever this year in fantasy football. All right, and that was my early 2024 mock draft. If you like the video, leave a like down below. Comment who you would have taken instead of one of my picks. Listen, I'm open for criticism. Let me know how you're feeling. If you like the video, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.